Professor N.T. Wright insists that the New Testament puts Jesus at the center of the picture and that we should work our way outward from there. From the moment we look at the world and jump to conclusions about God and what God is doing, without looking carefully at Jesus, we actually screen Jesus out of the picture. If he is not Lord of all, he is not Lord at all. Now, this wasn't just a first century issue, but is vital for our understanding today. This is what our world looks like as he healed a leper. This is what our world looks like as he forgave a penitent woman. This is what our world looks like as he broke bread on his last night with his friends. This is what our world looks like as he hung on a cross. This is what our world looks like as he was dead for three days in the tomb. This is what our world looks like as he astonished his friends in the upper room three days later, very much alive. When people ask, what is God doing in the coronavirus pandemic? They assume that God is sovereign. That is, that God is in complete control of everything and that he created all that is and that nothing ever happens outside of his control. We know in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created. And so since God is sovereign, never, nothing ever takes him by surprise, including a virus. Now, there are what we call Jesus events in the Messianic movement, announcing the arrival of the kingdom of God. But where there is a vacuum, that is a Jesus-shaped blank, Jesus warned his people that they would say, like in Luke 17, hear these words from the 20th verse about the coming of the kingdom of God. Once having been asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, the kingdom of God does not come with your careful observation, nor would people say, here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God has always been in here, in you and me, and we needn't look for some external revelation to claim the second coming will occur unless we know more about it than Jesus knew himself. Look at the Gospel of Mark, there in the 13th chapter, the 32nd verse. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Jesus himself is the reason that all of the world's suffering and horrors have been heaped up and dealt with on the cross. The resurrection is the launch of God's new creation, and you and I are part of it. This summons us to repent and gives us a clue as to what God is doing in the world, to try to jump from a pandemic or anything else to a conclusion about what God is doing without going through the Gospels is a basic theological mistake of trying to do something about God behind Jesus' back. If you want to know God, look at his son in the Gospels, like father, like son. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that we can have a glimpse of your Father and our Father in you. God, we are so thankful that you are a loving Heavenly Father, even in the midst of this coronavirus. May we relax in your presence, knowing that all will be well if we just stay safe. In Jesus' name we pray as he taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, if you don't remember anything else, please remember this. If you want to know God, just look at Jesus. And God bless you. Amen.